In order to determine the masses of each of the four disks, what we need to first do is draw a free body diagram for each disk showing the forces that are acting on that disk. And we've gone ahead and done that already, but of course let's explain each free body diagram. We're actually going to start with the last disk, disk C, which we've drawn on the far right of the diagram right over here. And we've drawn the forces that are acting on it. Now if you look at the diagram that was given in the question, you can see that disk C is connected by this rope that is marked tension 3. And so what we have is a tension force that is pulling up on that disk. And we've labeled that T3 and we've put in the given value of 9.8 newtons. Now of course there's also a gravitational force that's pulling down on the disk and we've labeled that as the mass of the disk times g. That's the equation, of course, for the gravitational force. And since these disks are suspended, then whatever upward force is being applied must be canceled by the downward force. So what this means is that for disk D, the tension T3 that points upward must have the same magnitude as the gravitational force that points downward. So we're going to set T3 equal to the mass of disk D times G. This is the gravitational force. And we'll fill in the known values. We know T3 was given as 9.8 newtons. We don't know the mass of disk D yet. And then multiplied by G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's very easy now to solve for the mass of disk D. You just simply divide both sides of the equation by the 9.8 meters per second squared. They'll cancel out on the right hand side. And we can see in this case, that the numbers yield a mass of one kilogram for disk D. So this would actually be the correct answer for part D of the question. We now work our way backwards. We'll look over at disk C. Look back at the diagram at disk C right here, and you'll see that it is attached to two ropes, T2 and T3. So we know from that that in the free body diagram, we're going to have T2 pulling up on disk C and, I don't know why that keeps doing that, and T3 is pulling down on disk C, but we also have the gravitational force pulling down on disk C. So there are three forces in this case. Again, because disk C is suspended, the upward T2 force must have an equal magnitude to the downward T3 and gravitational force. So we can come over here for disk C, and we'll say that the upward force T2 equals the downward force T3 plus the gravitational force, m sub c times g. Remember, we're just using magnitudes here, and that's why all these values are positive. So T2 was given as 49 newtons. T3, we know, was 9.8 newtons, plus the unknown mass times the 9.8 meters per second squared. So the rest for this disk is just a little bit of algebra. Let's subtract 9.8 newtons from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we're going to get 39.2 newtons here. And then to finish solving for the mask of disk C, just divide both sides of the equation by 9.8. So this will cancel out. You'll divide this by 9.8 meters per second squared. And you'll end up with a mass of four kilograms for disk C. So this is the correct answer to part C. We'll just proceed in a similar manner. We go back to disk B now. Disk B was attached to T1 and T2, and that's why in the free body diagram we have T1 pointing up on that disk and T2 pointing down on that disk. We're going to set the magnitude of T1, which is upward, equal to the magnitude of T2 plus the gravitational force, which are both downward. We know T1 was 58.8 newtons, and then T2 we know was 49 newtons, plus the unknown mass of disk B times 9.8 meters per second squared. You'll solve this in the same way that we solved it in part C. So go ahead and subtract 49 from both sides, then divide by 9.8, and you will find that one kilogram is the mass of disk B. So this is the correct answer to part B. Finally, disk A. Disk A was attached to the rope, which was attached to the wall, and that had a tension of 98 newtons. So we've just labeled that F wall, and we've set it equal to 98 newtons. And then disk A also was attached to T1, so that's why we've drawn T1 pointing down on that disk, and then the gravitational force is pointing down again. So one more time, we set the upward force, Fw, 
equal to the downward forces, T1 plus the gravitational force. We'll fill in the known values. And then finally, go ahead, subtract 58.8 from both sides, and then divide by 9.8, and you will get 4 kilograms as the mass of disk A and the correct answer to part A of the question. So now we know all the masses.